research suggests our subject today, El Nino, and sometimes La Nina, have been around for thousands of years. And El Nino, La Nina is a normal event where the ocean atmospheric system attempts to normalize the various weather parameters. So about the time some degree of normalization is near, we then slip the other way. We may be a big El Nino, we crash back down. So in the end, we end up with a historical record of temperatures of the ocean anomalies that look like this graphic. Now this includes El Nino above this horizontal line here, La Nina, so below it. This is, represents warmer than normal, this represents cooler than normal. This goes back a long ways and you can see through the years it's kind of like that. Some of them are strong, some of them are not very strong, and, but sometimes, sometimes even with some of the smaller ones we really had some serious problems. Now keep in mind on the El Nino, so let's just say a positive anomaly above normal of a half a degree, which is not very much, half a degree to a degree. It's a little tiny bit, and it's considered a weak El Nino. And then from one degree to 1.4 degrees, eh, it's moderate, it may cause more problems. Then 1.4 degrees Celsius to 1.9 is a strong event. While any event above two degrees Celsius or higher is classified as very strong and usually has some really bad weather associated with it. And the, for example, the, the El Nino of 2015-2016, uh, really high temperature, high anomaly readings in the Pacific. So, a fascinating event. Now also on this graphic, we can observe that as far as the warmest event, 1997-1998, the winner, with 1982-83 placing number two. Both of these events were considered very strong. So how and where do we measure the temperatures of El Nino? Of course, satellite ocean temperature profiling is increasing, but presently we depend on direct measurements along the equator of a very large area there in the Pacific Ocean. The areas where the sampling is taken are in four polygon regions designated NINO 4, NINO 3.4, NINO 3, and NINO 1 plus 2. So those particular areas, the ones that are measured, even though it's hot in some regions, we have found that on these, these NINO regions are the ones to measure to tell us what really is going on and what the impacts might be. Now measuring these temperatures of the water, you know, that's a major effort. It involves a lot of people, takes a lot of money, but it's very, very important. What happens? It's done very simply what we call an instrumented tethered buoy. It's a buoy that's hooked down, can't go away. It's a, it's a buoy and it's a line that goes down and it samples the water temperature from the ocean surface to approximately 1,500 feet. We normally use it down to about 600, but it'll do it all the way down to 1,500. It gives uh, the temperature of the, the ocean and that vertical, vertical profile. It gives the ambient wind, the wind conditions, uh, air temperature and humidity. So a lot of information coming out. There's a lot of research being done. Now from those tethered buoys, here's what the temperature profile looks like at a certain point in time. This graphic shows the ocean temperature anomaly versus time for Nino 4. In this area, it's actually cooled just a little bit. It was quite warm and then it's dropped off now. So which says to me at this particular time when this was measured, the features were beginning to move to the east, which is a sign of a, a full-blown uh, El Nino. So we'll be watching that particular area very closely, but temperatures have come down a little bit there. Now on the next graphic, this will be Nino 3.4. And uh, so the warmer waters have moved eastward. So this thing is running at about 1.8 degrees above normal, still significant, okay. And then we will go to the next one. And we see here we are about 2.3. So that's significant. Anything over two is really strong. So, and it may get higher. And on this graphic, this is the Nino boxes one plus two. Very, very warm, not too far from the coast of South America. And it gives you some idea. This one jumps up really high on that profile from those tethered buoys. That, uh, the above normal, when this uh, at its peak there, was running about 2.5, 2.7, which is, would be stronger than anything ever recorded. Now, whether when you average it all out, it's that high, we just don't know. 